What's going on, everybody? My name is Nick. My name is Dave. And this is The Deep Dive, and we are in our third week of this identity series, and we're talking about uh, bridging the gray areas this, right. yeah. this time. Is that right? Yeah, Did kind of a right? continuation in from the sanctification that we were in the week before. We kind of picked it up with the gray area. So we'll get into all that. We'll get into it. Yeah. And I, uh, I wanted to say I, I appreciated what you talked about on Sunday, because I think I think sometimes we avoid some of these gray areas because they might not have a perfectly finite answer or whatever, or a concrete answer. And I'm excited to get into this today. Okay. Well, we'll talk about that of whether we avoid them or we just kind of mucked him Five into them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sure. All right. Well, let's, let's go. go. <laughs> All right, Dave, like I said last time, I, uh, we can we can banter about our weekends, or I can ask you weird random questions to see uh, how people can kind of get to know us a little bit. Which one do you want today? Well, you made me curious on the yeah. on the weird question. So okay, yeah, let's how, do it. All right. So I was going to ask, dead or alive, if you could see any band live that you've never seen before, who would you see? Uh, <clears throat> probably Queen. Okay. Yeah, that would be a fun show. I mean, most I think. people would have go to for the Beatles, but I, you know, I, and that would have been great too. But yeah, probably Queen. That'd be a fun show. Yeah, I think I think I would go with mine's alive. Yeah. I think I would go Foo Fighters. I've never seen them live, but I would love to see. But them you live. have the opportunity to do that. I like the Dead better. Yeah, you know, yeah, 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 or the Dead, the Grateful Dead. No, <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> we could take it all the way there. But uh, so, Dave, we talked uh, third week of this sermon identity, all this good stuff. Um, why don't you kind of give us a breakdown of what you talked about, and then we'll dive deeper. All right. So this uh, series that we've started the year with, you know, is looking at identity as Christ followers. And so uh, it really actually kind of began with Beth's sermon on baptism, right. you know, as an identity. But, but the stuff that I preached on, uh, you know, we looked at that we are unique, that we're beloved, and that we are called in that set first sermon, which was on call. Uh, and then we followed it up the next week, uh, looking at three words that uh, we toss around a lot in the church, but formation, uh, confirmation, and sanctification, yep. sanctification going on toward in our, in our Christian journey, going on to be more like Jesus. And so as a follow-up to that, uh, we talked this week about navigating or really rather bridging those gray areas that we come across in our life. And so I think we would like for it to be a lot more black and white. I think, yes. you know, we, uh, and a lot of, of, of Christians or some Christians would say, you know, it's all black and white. Mm -hmm. It's right there in the Bible. It's all black and white, you know, it's right or wrong, but it's really not quite that simple Yeah, uh, because there are some things in the Bible that, that are kind of gray areas of where's the either where is the line or how do you interpret it in a, a particular circumstance? And so as an example of that, I gave two, uh, we went through two passages, both from first Corinthians. Right. And just as the context, which is I'm repeating something most everybody knows first Corinthians was a, was a deeply, uh, it, was a, it was a great church and it was in a, a very cosmopolitan area and people were, uh, really responding to the gospel, but it was a very diverse church in that there were uh, people that were from a Greek background and uh, with all of that cultural uh, impotence that was that, impotence, not impetus, impetus on that. Um, and they, uh, so they, uh, you know, had all of those kind of traditions that they brought into it. Then you had folks that were Jewish people and were been raised in the Jewish faith, but they had become Christians, but yet they still had those traditions that were important to them that maybe they were still practicing or trying to figure out if they sh should practice them or not. Then you had uh, people that were slaves and you had slave owners in the same church, you know, and then uh, we talked a little bit and we'll get into more of the pro uh, process, people that were maybe coming to Christ that were coming from really kind of troubling kind of places, for example, the temple prostitutes that were uh, converting to Christianity. And they were all in the same church with all of these different uh, contexts and people being people. You had folks that were judgmental and some that were more legalistic than others. And, you know, uh, people that wanted, you know, everybody to do the Jewish law and other people that, 
you know, we're accepting the freedom in Christ. And, and so all of that made for a lot of uh, dysfunction within the church. Sure. They had lots of division. And so Paul writes to them, uh, trying to get them to be unified. And uh, so he does have to address some of the problems they were having. And one of the big ones that he addressed was the meat sacrificed uh, to idols yeah. problem which is not something that we have to deal with yet. We got an entire chapter in the new Testament that's devoted to eating meat sacrificed to, to idols. And so, you know, what it was, was there was these temple worship and they had a real anthropomorphic understanding of gods. And so they would uh, sacrifice meat and burn the meat. And, and then afterwards, after the smells had gone up and all that stuff, they, you know, would sometimes sell the meat and at a discount and you know, it's like an people, old school men's barbecue. Yeah, call it, yeah. And, and <laughs> uh, I think there's probably a lot more than that. Yes, but but it to it than that. But yeah, that was uh, it was kind of it. I was like, yeah, hey, man, that's great smelling meat there. They got some really good meats that they were sacrificing to Aphrodite there. So, yeah. but you know, we might as well just chow down on that because I mean, there is no such thing as Aphrodite. It's just a you know, it's a made right. up God. Yeah. And so that's, that was some people's takes, but other people, maybe if they had been involved w with temple worship a lot or had family members that still were into that, it was a real trigger with them yeah. and said, no, no, absolutely. If you were eating that meat, it's just as, as good as if you were worshiping that idol yourself. Mm. And so Paul has to write to address it. And basically what he says in a nutshell, and you can go back and read it if you want to, uh, but it, he basically says, you know, yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. You know, there's only God, there's only one God, there's only one Lord in Jesus. But, you know, if it is causing other people to stumble, then maybe you should just kind of lay off and not do it or not do it in front of them. Right. That sort of thing. Just sort of that kind of sensitivity. Yeah. And so, um, you know, it, it comes down to is, is something right or is it wrong? Is it black or is it white or is it gray in the middle? You know, and I, uh, one of the words that I said, you know, is this thing that we're talking about, is this something that is uh, written in, and it's definitely a directive and a law, or is it something that is, you know, uh, more of just describing the context that they're in, yeah. you know, and so how do, how do we distinguish the difference? And I think in this case, it's pretty easy uh, for us in modern culture to see that there is a difference. So we sure. uh, have to say, well, how, what is the gospel in this? How can it apply to us? And so are there things in this world that maybe they're right for some people and, 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 and they'd be wrong for other people. And, uh, and sometimes uh, it may be a case of like, it may be wrong in some circumstances. Yeah. So what I thought of immediately was alcohol, mm. you know, because within the church, we have, families that and individuals that, that struggle with alcohol. Yeah. Uh, they've got, I mean, you've, you've talked about on the podcast, you've got alcoholism in your family. Yep. And so what might be okay for me may be wrong for you. Yeah. And, and also there's this sensitivity is that like, shouldn't be like if somebody is, is like recovering from alcoholism and you know, you're kind of brandishing it in their face it, that that's not very kind. Right. And so, you know, that's one of the, the areas that uh, we, we talked about. And then we looked at this passage that actually comes and It's interesting as you're reading through first Corinthians, Paul is writing a letter. It's an entire letter. It's not like little pieces to be pulled out of, you know, made into our context, but it's a letter and he's building to something. Yeah. And so when he gets into 11, he starts talking about women covering their uh, heads in worship. Yep. This is whole thing about heads covering. And there's little isolated verses that you can pull out that people have built up whole teachings around. It's like if you, I don't know if you've ever known a church or uh, a denomination or something where the women didn't cut their hair. And, yeah. and, you know, because it talks about that, you know, the hair is, you know, the crown of a woman. And it also talks about that men should have short hair. Right. And so that's very cultural for that time, you know, and because, I mean, in the Bible, you know, we got Samson and we don't know what Jesus looked like, but we, all the pictures that we have, because they're pulling from that era, have Jesus with long hair. Right. But yet, 
you know, I can remember uh, back in, you know, the seventies when people were, uh, we're growing their hair a little bit longer that, that, you know, that verse, you know, you know, it's a sin for a man to have long hair. Yeah. You know, that. So, uh, and, you know, I know, uh, and have met certain people that like, they really feel like the women should have their head covered when they come into church. And so, yeah, you were, you and, were telling a story yesterday about, uh, somebody that you've actually had in your church that you were kind of, Going back and forth with about that. Well, yeah, she was a church member. She was in her 80s. She and her husband attended. She was, uh, I think, out of primitive ho holiness is where yeah. it comes from. And so I don't think she'd ever cut her hair. She wore it up in a little bun and that she always ha had that. And and she really, really felt that all the women should do that. And what really had them come unglued is like wearing pants, yeah. women wearing pants in church. So. Uh, yeah, but that was their, that was their back down. That was their tradition. But yeah. it just goes to show where like people will pull certain verses and not look at the entire context of what's going on. Yeah. Um, you know, something, something I, you know, as I was kind of reflecting back after the sermon yesterday and, and just thinking about the diversity in the church uh, that Paul was talking to in Corinthians it's and it's, it feels very similar to most of the churches around here, you know, sure. just people have different opinions, viewpoints and stuff like that. And, and I know where we're going, so I'm, I won't give, give it away or yeah. take your thunder there, but I, I think it's, it shows how um, the Bible still relates to us today. And these lessons still really can kind of come back to us and say like, you know, we're still called to be in relationship with these people, even if we don't agree, agree with, with everything. And you what, know what I mean? And, and, and the, What's going to divide us is going to be different than what divided them probably. Exactly. I mean, some some issues will be the same. But you know, going back to I think I used the words I used were descriptive or prescriptive. Is this prescribed? Yeah. And there's definitely some things that are prescribed. And I mm -hmm. gave a list of those. Don't I mean, kill. <laughs> yeah, we, we probably well, right. But what about what about, <laughs> I was like, oh, was what about war or self-defense? Right. That's where it gets into gray areas. Yeah. Or, you know, adultery. I mean, I don't can't think of a nuance for adultery, but there's some things that are, that are clearly black and white. Sure. And, you know, stealing your neighbor's car. Yeah. You think of any circumstances where you could call that a gray area. Right. You know, I, I use a little exaggerated thing. If I had a little statue that I decided was my God and was going to worship that, that's clearly going against the first couple of commandments sure. there. And so, um, but in, in and people really wanting to do well and to read the Bible and take it for what it is, they can sometimes get hung up on one little verse or another. And so I offered a couple of interpretations of this whole thing from 1 Corinthians 11 that I've heard. Uh, one of them being is because of that church and the community that was in the time that it was in, there was this uh, temple to Aphrodite. And I think they had hundreds of temple prostitutes there and yeah. they had shaved heads. And so they that was like their identifying. That was mark? their identifying thing. Oh, they were okay. they were slave they were prostitutes. They were slaves and enslaved to that temple. And so, but they became Christians, some of them. Yeah. And so, coming to church, they you know it would be kind of a shame thing. And so, when Paul is talking about you, the woman should have their heads veiled when they come to worship. It was a way to protect those women so that everybody would be on equal footing when they came to church. Now, that's not super clear there in that scripture, but yeah. I've, I've heard that in just sort of cultural reference, pulling from other things, that that might have been what was going on. Yeah. Uh, there was this other thing that I, that I heard somebody teach on one time that like there's this little line where Paul says that, that a woman should keep have her head veiled in worship because of the angels. Mm -hmm. And it goes back to this myth that uh, that flo was floating around, not biblical, but myth that was floating around that the, the angels, when they would fly, they would be flying over and they would look down and they would see a woman in her beautiful hair and all of that. And so they would come down and have relations with them. And out of that, that's where giants came from. Okay. And so, which is kind of out there, yes. but you know, it was, it was a more ancient kind of understanding where there's a lot more superstition and mysticism yeah. that went on. And so, uh, so when Paul might, it, it's hard for me because what Paul says in other places to think that Paul, because it's just, but it's just this crazy little phrase where he talks about, you should keep your head covered because of the angels. Yeah. So, 
What's up with that? Uh -huh. So the fact is, we really don't know. Yeah, we don't know, and so it does come into one of those gray areas. And I think I think we have to look at this as being descriptive for something that was going on that was a real conflict in that church, and that it's building to something. Yeah. He is riding through and addressing one by one all these conflicts as he goes through First Corinthians, and then he gets into one of your favorite chapters. I know mm -hmm. uh, First Corinthians twelve, yep. where it starts talking about the body of Christ yep. and that we all have a place in the body of Christ. Yep. Every single person, yep. you know, slave, free, Gentile, Jew, Greek, some other ethnicity. Yeah. Everybody, we're all one in Christ. We're all part of the body, and there's a place for them, even temple prostitutes, even, you know, where whoever and wherever your circumstance, we're all, as we're coming together in Christ, we're all part of that body, and we need each other. Yeah. And so, and then he rolls right in from 1 Corinthians 12 into 1 Corinthians 13, which called the love chapter. Yep. And it's just like, you can know all this stuff, you can have all this knowledge and understanding, but if you don't love first, then, you know, you've missed out. Yeah. And so. And that's, you know, when you think about people who have differences of opinion, difference in a way, I think, especially in our culture, finding the space to still be like to show love to that person sometimes feels very hard and very difficult because you're like, I can't believe this person would think this way or that way. You know, I think sometimes we're almost more. um looking to be right than we are to be in relationship with our neighbor. Mm -hmm. And that, that feels sad sometimes. Yeah. And so one of my points that I came out of it was that, you know, you can, there are people that are in the body of Christ that can have very, very different opinions, yeah. but we are still called to be together. And I think it's there in the body of Christ where we learn to love and accept one another, even in our differences where we, where we grow. Yeah. I mean, when everybody is loving each other and everybody's thinking alike, you know, it's pretty easy. But it's in those difficult times where I think we can really learn to love and appreciate the other. Well, and, and I think sometimes when there's contrasting viewpoints, it actually pushes you to learn and grow more. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think of like the time when I left like youth group uh, as, as a teenager and went to college, you know, I didn't have a group of people who thought like me, you know, did the same kind of stuff that I did and, and kind of felt the same. I, I went to college and there was a bunch of different viewpoints and a bunch of different things. And, and all of a sudden I had to stop and kind of start thinking, you know, and growing myself, mm -hmm. you know? So I, I find a lot of value when there's contrasting viewpoints and, and people who might not, hundred percent agree. And if you've ever been on a Bible study with me, it's the reason why I ask a lot of questions to people around the room is, yeah. is to see like, you know, this is what I think, but what do you think? You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because I think sometimes the different viewpoints actually opens up our eyes to, to maybe what God's actually trying to call us to. Yeah. And, you know, it, I, it, in a, a Bible study format or, you know, a classroom somewhere where there are different viewpoints, you know, yeah. that that's where I think we get into having to navigate and bridge the gray yeah. because there are some things that are prescriptive for yeah. sure. And so I'm not just saying that everything is subjective and anything goes, there are some things that are definitely Orthodox Christianity, that's there, but there's a lot more of it that is, you know, up to opinion and interpretation. Sure. Uh, and so that's where we need to learn to love. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there are different people draw the line in different places, but it's, I think it's important for us, above all things, to, yeah. uh, you know, Paul says faith, hope, and love, and, and the greatest of these is love. And so I think uh, learning to love and care and be concerned about the person, because right now we live in a time where if someone disagrees with us on just about anything, we just completely write them off and dismiss them. Sure. Uh, but, but to try to find, you know, how are we going to stay in relationship with that person? And how are we going to learn to love them, uh, despite the fact that we may have some really, really strong uh, opposition to maybe how some of the things that they believe, but and maybe some of the things that they're doing. Yeah. And and so how do we find and grow in that? Uh, and it's tough. It's tough. What would you say, like, if you had to name a couple, are there some, like, common gray areas that you think we struggle with a lot, just in general? 
Well, <laughs> that's a tough. It's a tough question. I yeah, think. I mean, yeah, it, it is. Um, I don't know how much to go into this, but I think around human sexuality. Sure. I think that's one of the places it's been debated and talked about. Yeah. And that's where it gets into prescriptive and descriptive to me. And it yeah. was like, like it just like with like women growing out or their hair or covering their hair. It's like, is this something that is prescriptive for everybody? Or is this something that's, that is describing a certain thing that was within that context? Sure. Is it, describing relationships as we know them now, where there's a mutual love between two people yeah. or is it something else? And, um, and so, you know, there's obviously been a lot of debate around that. So that, that's, that's one, you know, major gray area that, yeah. that comes up for me. And and some people don't think it's a gray area. I mean, it's a totally black and, black white, and white, black and white issue with them. You know, the, uh, I, I guess another one, and it's not a big deal in our, in our faith community here at Hickory Flat, but you know, it's women in leadership, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and people will find those one or two verses to pull out, you know, yep. about women being submissive or not speaking in church and, you know, and, and they'll build a whole, you know, theology Narrative. around yeah, that. Yeah. And so, you know, I think, I think that's another place just in Christendom that there's certainly debate about in gray area. And for some people it's really black and white and for others, you know, it's not. And so, you know, the, you choose, you choose to land on these two or three scriptures. Yeah. Whereas I can point to point you to two, three, four, five more, both in hum human sexuality and, and, um, uh, and w in women's leadership in the church. Right. But those are th some things that have completely divided our, you know, our Christian, uh, you know, church, Sure. you know, I think uh, I think that's why it helps, like especially like when you're studying the Bible and stuff like that, is to really take into like look into context of what's going on in the the, the society around them. You know, I, I would have never known about the Aphrodite stuff had you not brought that. I, you know, that that's not part. Of it. And I was like, oh, this actually opens up some eyes to that. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of those demographics and a lot of those people who um, like the head covering. I thought that was such a cool like. Tidbit of information, and maybe that but, wasn't the case, but it gives you some thought that the context exactly. around it, it could, there could have been that piece to it, and it, you know, because I think it definitely it did, it, that definitely did go on. Yes, I, I don't know that that's that that's what Paul meant. Right. I mean, Paul's not here for us to ask him. Right. But it it, it seems like that to me. That's a very good explanation of it. Yeah. Uh, some other person may offer, you know, knows a lot more, may offer a different explanation of it. But it is one of those, like you said, you hadn't ever heard of that before. I, I do think there are certain scriptures we completely avoid because either we don't understand them or just like, uh, you know, it just, the implications for us living here in 2024, you know, it's just like, where does this apply to us? You know? uh, yeah. You know? I, I think that's uh, yeah. the church down the road is not sacrificing meat to idols for us to go buy, you know, right. Uh, we don't have that issue, but there, there oftentimes is some way that we can apply what the kind of the overarching theme that's happening. But, you know, these letters in particular, they're written to a specific people with a specific problem and almost all the letters, yeah. you know, Paul does do encouraging, but almost all of them are addressing some real problem that's going on with the church that was very, very, you know, specific to them. Right. It, it would be, it'd be like Paul writing to us, but that, that letter might not apply to Mount Zion right down the road. Right. Or, you know, they, yeah. they would get a different letter probably. You know right. what I mean? Like, exactly. Yeah. So it is, it, it's, it's pretty cool. It all gets pretty nuanced, uh, you know, and uh, it, it'd be sometimes easier, but I mean, that's just life too. You know, it, it's just life that there is, you know, there is uncertainty. Sure. There there, is a, there's a, some, yeah. Figuring it out. So know? we need to have love and grace with the uncertainty uh, that we have and, you know, and, and try to do the right thing for us that God is calling to us in our heart. Yeah. And so if I, who am I to I'll just say this woman who was in my church before, who am I to, to say to her, you know, She's you, wrong. you're wrong. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's not a very loving because that was something she grew up with mm -hmm. that was important to her. Yeah. Um, you know, I <laughs> doesn't mean you have to change everything. I, I kind of wish that she would show more grace to other people sure. around that. 
But I, I, I got it that that was important to her. Yeah. I mean, I'm, and I'm sure I've got things in my past that are, are traditional. You know, we see it in worship all the time. Yeah. You know, this is the way you do proper worship. Well, it's what we, you know, you was proper worship in the 70s and the 80s or whatever. And that, you know, things have changed now or, you know, some tradition that, you know, uh, somebody had. But it was, you, you can't take away that that was important. That was sacred for them. Yeah. I think I've told this story before, but now on the podcast, I think I might have told it worship, but you know, I, there was a woman when I was doing youth work who was on staff with me at the church and uh, the youth did not go to the Sunday night service. Uh, there was a Sunday night service, but the youth had youth group at, during the time of that Sunday night service. She really felt very strongly that the, because the service was very small, but if the youth group came, it would, you know, would bump it up. But you know, there was nothing about that service that was, particularly going uphill yeah, to the youth. Not youth friendly, <laughs> yeah, yeah. necessarily. It's like you want to kill the youth group, force them to go to this. And so we had had much, much debate about it. And, you know, the pastor, uh, a senior pastor of that church said, you know, I, I came in, I was complaining about her one day. I was like, and she just won't stop on that. It's just constant. He said, have you ever listened to what, for, to her, you know, to kind of the seek first to understand then be yep. understood. And so I said, you know, why is it so important to you? And then she described to me how important it had been for her when she was a youth. It was a place where she had really felt accepted by the church. It was a place where, you know, she had uh, either given her life to Christ or certainly it had furthered her walk in Christ. And she wanted that for, she didn't want our youth to miss out on that. Yeah. And so then I kind of had to explain, well, you know, this is what we do and you should come and see, and you know, that we're having these experiences, the youth and, you know, and, uh, and, you know, I think she kind of got it, and I think I kind of got it, and I think we also kind of agreed to disagree. Right. And and but but yet there was a love and a respect that was there, sure. and I think that's that's all that we can ask of people. Absolutely. You know, yeah. Absolutely. To get to that point of, you know, okay, I get you. I'm not going to go there. Yeah. Uh, but I hope you understand where I'm coming from. You know, if we can get to that, that's a pretty healthy place. Yeah. Dave, I just want to make sure I understand um, the gray areas. Would you say like something like pineapple on pizza might be a gray area for some people? Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I guess. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, it just popped in my head. It was like you know, some people say absolutely not, some people say absolutely, and maybe it's a little bit of a gray area. Yeah, I need some understanding. I, 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 I think you could push it. It was a metaphor. If the I can't go there. <laughs> There's no way I can make that work within the context. Of the I church. know, I know. Yeah. Well, is there? But I, 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 you know, whether you know, you should uh, go and kneel at the altar to receive Holy Communion, or go by and have intention the way we do it, where yeah. and take it that way, because there's some people that have really, really strong opinions about that. Sure. And, and baptism, you know, yeah, with and the sprinkling strong, versus sprinkling for that. Yeah. The, those are the areas where people have really, really strong opinions. And, and there, some of it's based on scripture, but but most of it is based on how they were raised and what their tradition was, or maybe how they, you know, they came to Christ. Yeah. Remember, like in the Walk to Emmaus movement, you've been to Walk to Emmaus? I've not done okay. Walk to Emmaus. Okay, so there's a lot of traditions around that, too. And so as people have changed communities, maybe they were in North Georgia and they went to another place and they did things a little bit differently because it was so impactful and so powerful to them. When they went over this new community, oh, they're doing it wrong. You know how they do it because it was special to them in those moments. Yeah, and so you know it, 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 it you know, I get it. But it, you know, we need to show grace and realize that that can be equally impactful for somebody sure. in that new context. Sure. Yeah. Well, Dave, that that is about our time. Um, it's been a great conversation. Is there anything? Last that you want to make sure people understand at the end? Yeah, I got one more. Uh, Juan is preaching this weekend. Okay. And then I've got one more in this series, and then we will we'll jump into Lent. So we'll talk about Lent next time. So, yeah. It'll be fun yeah, to have yeah. one preach. Yeah. Get them up there. Looking forward to it. Yeah. <laughs> I think, think we Well, thank you guys so much for watching. You know where to find us. If you have any questions or comments to jump in, please just drop them in the chat below so the rest of the community can be a part of. You can find us on Facebook, YouTube, all those good places. And uh, without anything else to say, y'all have a great one. All right. God bless. God bless.